and welcome to Mock the Week. I'm Daryl Green. Joining me this week are Andy Parsons, Susan Kalman and Rob Beckett, Ramesh Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis and Hal Cruttenden. We start with a round call. If this is the answer, what is the question on the board? Are six categories. Susan, which category would you like? Um, politics, please. No problem at all. Politics is the category. The answer is two. What is the question? Um, how many celebrities from the 1970s is it still okay for me to like? <laughs> <laughs> very provisional number, that. Uh, <laughs> investigation is still ongoing. <laughs> yes. Is it what was the population in God's first census? <laughs> Is it the number of times Dolly Parton's face moved whilst her she was... <laughs> hey, 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 hey. Are you, are you, are you loving the Dolly, hey, are you? You, yeah, a, you can attack anything on this show, but yeah. you do not attack Dolly Parton. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're coming to my house and attack Dolly Parton between the hours of nine and five. <laughs> <laughs> That... Is, it, um, is it what most Glastonbury goers dread doing the most? <laughs> <laughs> is it the number of millibands it takes to ruin a party? <laughs> is it which number most looks like a man kneeling to vomit in a lavatory? <laughs> is it uh, the number of tracks on a CD of the Cheeky Girls Best Of compilation? <laughs> Is it the number of footballers you can buy it before you get really told off? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it um, if Jeremy Kyle and Jeremy Clarkson went into a room, how many people in that room would be pricks called Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> Surely this, this, is, this is Desmond Tutu's middle name. <laughs> <laughs> Ed, uh, move with the correct answer if you can, please. Is it, what's the highest number Ranulph Fiennes can count to? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't finish that one. <laughs> is it the votes against Junker? Junker works for me, you're absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. It is yeah. the votes against Junker. There you go. Yes, the question I was looking for was, how many European leaders voted against Jean-Claude Juncker for President of the European Commission? This is the news that at a summit in Brussels, David Cameron was only able to persuade one other European leader, the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, to join him in voting against Juncker with 26 voting for it. 26-2 defeat for Cameron. 26 nobody was impressed with that. The only person who was impressed with that was Roy Hodgson, who thought getting two was a great result against the tough European team. <laughs> we can't even get people to vote for us in Eurovision. How are we going to in actual politics? <laughs> what has been the reaction to Cameron among the European press? They call him the Wayne Rooney of the election thing, which is... And they didn't mean that in a good way? They didn't mean in a kind of a... No, they, 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 they meant it because Wayne Rooney is also very much in favour of decentralisation from Brussels. <laughs> <laughs> The threat was that this will make it more likely that Britain will leave the EU. Uh, and there is a general ramping up, you can see, of anti-EU sentiment, obviously, yeah. saw during the European elections. Mm. Only this week, the Daily Express uh, ran this headline, this incredible... So, 150 new EU laws ruining Britain. You know, I mean, you just, oh, my God, I can't, what are these laws that are ruining Britain? And they put a little box of eight of the ones they thought they were most likely to ruin Britain. I'm just going to read a couple of them now, and you can just go, oh, my God, the country's got to bets. It's ruined now. One of them was, it will be illegal to ship a live dog, cat or ferret without a health certificate signed by a vet. <laughs> that strikes at the very heart, which is what Britain is for me. The people's <laughs> ability to bring their ferret just on a whim. Uh, do you know what? Do you know what? Fit, 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 I'm going to bring you to see Europe, OK? <laughs> top, top, ow, 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 top right away. <laughs> Another one, another one that's ruining Britain, it, this, these laws will set out the difference between fruit juice from concentrate and concentrated fruit juice. Yeah. <laughs> now, that, says it, that, is, per, that makes perfect sense. Fruit juice from concentrated is the thing you can drink. Concentrated fruit juice is the bit you have to put water to to turn it mm. into fruit juice from concentrate, right? <laughs> it is about time this country learned the difference, because I am sick of accidentally pouring Ribena <laughs> and then staring <laughs> at it going, have I diluted this enough? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, somebody's going to taste this. You're going to I'm not going to taste this. This could be death in a cup. In, oh, no. No. Mm. Mm. 
<laughs> Meanwhile, by the way, which Conservative campaign backfired this weekend? Oh. This was getting Eric Pickles to wear lycra. <laughs> <laughs> This was the campaign to try and see how many working-class toy MPs they could find. Yes. And they could only find 14 out of 300 that they thought could be considered working-class, which was slightly more than the Labour Party could manage. <laughs> I'm working-class and I'm a Tory. That's Taurus. Taurus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> The, the problem is that for most Tories, I think hardship is going to Durham University. That's like the worst <laughs> thing that <laughs> can say. Yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? Because it doesn't matter, you know, if they're working class background or not, if what the policies are. I don't care if somebody goes, we don't give a shit about the NHS. You know, I don't think, oh, well, you're working class, so... <laughs> you mean if Dick Van Dyke so much better, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sing a cheery yeah. song yeah. about we privatising. We you all Whoa, down! Shimmy. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Let's not get involved in doing each other's accents, Ramesh. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, that's, I mean, that's going to look that, a lot worse for me. But that's the thing, that's the thing, you know, it'd be like, you know, can't, can't suddenly rebrand the Tories as, like, a working-class party. It would be like me doing that, just coming on and playing the immigrant vote, going, oh, hello, Dad, I saw Greg. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm very grateful. <laughs> can't suddenly stop pulling that out. Yeah. I don't know why you can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rock the no, boat, right? Yeah. But then I could, come, I, could, uh, I could do you, not literally, Rob. Don't get excited. Yeah. Barking up the wrong tea, sweetie. Um, uh, oh, 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 Why is it so slow? It's out. I'm coming round from an operation. <laughs> oh, my, what's the bell? Uh, <laughs> I'm extra. Why would it be better? I can't get out that chimney. The problem is, to me, Rob, that is exactly what you sound like. <laughs> is this you trying I'm to make sure the bit of tension on my team? <laughs> To be honest, to be honest, I, I, I hesitated to call the team and uh, <laughs> yeah, like, 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 Shall we please go back to Sorry. the Tories? I think rather than well, this. There was a Tory MP, group. David Amess, who yes. has apparently been doing all of the research into Tory working class MPs. He said he was working class because he didn't have a telephone when he was growing up. He had to lean out the window and shout very loudly. And I still have to do that in my home. That's just due to the level of reception that I get from O2. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know, like, I've banged on about being working class, but I didn't know Radio 4 existed until I was asked to be on it. I thought... <laughs> So I thought it was one of them new ones, like One Extra or the Asian Network or something like that. You know, when they thought one of the digital ones. Do you know what's happening here, though? I, I didn't mean to be rude. You sound really lovely. It's, it's, it's almost... Uh, I, we are, like, opposites. It's like, you know, a track. To be, we could end up together. This could be like Katie Price and Peter Andre on the <laughs> <laughs> A spin off on, on <laughs> BBC Three of how this relationship is going. Uh, uh, in other news, under proposed health guidelines, what could we see banished from our diets? Sugar. Sugar. Yeah. Sugar is very, very bad for you. And there's a lot of sugar in fizzy drinks. Your daily requirement of sugar is in one yeah. single can of coke. This was released, six six released from... by the Department of You Already Know This, uh, yeah. who is a, the <laughs> Minister of Come On. Do we have to keep telling you this stuff? Yeah. Just put it down. <laughs> it is a fruit juice problem, it isn't it? Because fruit juice apparently contains as much sugar as fizzy drinks. So, in which case, the man from Del Monte, he say, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, that I, I always knew OJ was a killer. Um... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Wow, thank you. I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna... Uh, stop my stopwatch on that at 14 years. Uh, <laughs> Look, what I love about that is how you could put that straight on Dave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the problem with drinking... The problem with just drinking water is it just tastes like your mouth, doesn't it? <laughs> Taste they want to ban fizzy drinks. I don't know how they're going to come into my house and stop me doing it, but I think if they, if they ban it and make me drink water, then the, the opposite should apply. And when I go swimming, I should be allowed to swim in, like, Fanta. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> but the thing is, is that they, they, they give you all these warnings, but like I, I can't, you know, I just ignore it because you, the, the warnings aren't strong enough. Like I can't, I can't stop smoking, for example. You know, like they tell you all these bad things, like heart disease, lungs disease. I can't stop. Like they could tell me, like they, they were going to take my children away if I was, if I didn't stop smoking. I'd like cut down to ten. <laughs> 20% of kids they reckon now are obese by the time they leave junior school aged 11. So somebody needs to tell them that big school is just a name. <laughs> it's not a description they have to live up to. It's the language they use. It's a paper thing, isn't it? Because the, the headline that I saw said that we had, the government have declared war mm. yeah. on sugar. It's not really a war, is it? Nobody's gone where it's morning. We wrote to Tate and Lyle. <laughs> no response has been forthcoming. <laughs> I'm afraid to tell you from the, this moment, we are at war with sugar. <laughs> there is no war. There is no war. We're always using this term, war on, and war on drugs. We've had, you know, war on sugar, war on drugs. And actually, you look at those two things, that's two opposite things. War, sugar makes kids fat, drugs make kids thin. Maybe there's some middle ground. <laughs> In a family situation, smack can be a punishment and a reward. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, I'm going to give you Andy! Now we play around called Gag of Thrones. This <laughs> game involves Rob and Hal, so if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round's a stand-up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. First topic is holidays. Who wants to come in at? Okay. Rob. I love an uh, holiday. I'm terrible at the languages, though, when I go away. Do you know what I mean? I still say jalapeno. <laughs> I know it's jalapeno, but I don't speak English properly. I don't know why I start having a go at Mexican. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to like getting on the plane. The plane's fine. I still love the little symbol that says no smoking. I was like, why have they still got that there? When was the last time we saw someone trying to smoke on a plane? They might as well have no barbecues up there. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone on a plane like, sorry, sir, no smoking. Since when? <laughs> I get worried on a plane with a little ashtray. I think, how old's this plane? <laughs> I went to Barcelona recently with the in-laws and my girlfriend. They're a bit posh and stuff. They go out for dinner and I've got a bit of a basic palate. They're all eating like, weird food. They went, oh, Rob, do you want some cured meats? I was like, depends what was wrong with it in the first place. <laughs> I don't do paella either. It's just busy rice, isn't it? <laughs> it's a special fried rice that's got well out of hand. <laughs> I, uh, the thing is, well, in Barcelona, what's weird is they try and sell you drugs late at night. Well, it's really wild, because I was walking along and I was a bit hungry, so I hadn't eaten any dinner, and this bloke came up, was like, Coke, weed, pills? I was like, no, thanks, mate. I'm after a bit of KFC. Right? He goes, KFC? I've got a bit of that. <laughs> I was like, no, you haven't, mate. <laughs> Not unless you've got a deep fat fry in your bum bag. <laughs> As I go to walk off, he whips out a little plastic bag of powdery stuff, like, here it is, KFC. I'm like, yeah, of course it is, mate. And I walk off. Ten minutes later, I think to myself, what if that was a secret blend of 11 herbs and spices? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Rob. OK, that'll leave us with how. Let's see what you've been left with. Let's spin the wheel again. And the subject is marriage. <laughs> right. Um, I have been married uh, 14 years. I know, I look too young. Um, <laughs> People say silly things when you've been married a certain amount of time. If you say, oh, we've been married 14 years, people say things like, oh, you get less for murder. Ah. <laughs> you don't. I've checked. <laughs> um... <laughs> oh, oh, why do people compare marriage to prison as well? There's far more sex in prison, isn't there? <laughs> I am joking, obviously. My wife is absolutely my best friend. My best friend in the world, she is. Oh, obviously, I'm not her best friend. No, Lisa's her best friend. <laughs> We've, uh, we've, got, we've, we've got two children as well, two girls, thank God, because I'd be rubbish with boys. I'd be right to imagine a little boy coming home from school saying, Daddy, Billy Smith says I've got to bring two pounds to school every day or else I'm going to get a kicking. I'm like, look, calm down, ask Billy if we can set up some sort of direct debit. Whatever's easiest for him. <laughs> but my daughters, my daughters worry about me. I, I know that's wrong. My, my, my oldest daughter, she came up to me when she was about eight, she did this, and this is absolutely true, came up to me very serious, seriously and said, Daddy... 
are you gay? Uh, my mum, my mum was always convinced I was gay. I, I, I was to bring my, 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 my wife and kids over to dinner, my mum would be going, oh, still living in denial. Shut up, mum. <laughs> when I was 16, I brought my first proper girlfriend home, and I said to my mum, can she stay over in my room? My mum was like... <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> but don't stay up all night talking about boys. <laughs> OK, very good. Point to Hal there. Well done. Thank you very much. You're lovely. Come and sit down. <laughs> Our next round is called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Is it from the Uruguayan Daily News? Shoulder-wielding thug. <laughs> our hero's <laughs> precious tooth enamel. <laughs> Is it three men trying to make up the French flag and having a massive argument about it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it the goalkeeper, the bloke in red, going, I have an itch, just there. there just, <laughs> to, just to the back of my knee. There. Yes, there, let's go. <laughs> Is it Suarez imagines a half-time orange? <laughs> Is it England's opponents play sitting down to give England a chance? <laughs> <laughs> and you know what that is. Is it the um, Luis Suarez bite? Of course it is, absolutely. Thank you very much, Rob Beckett. Uh... <laughs> yes, of course, it's Luis Suarez who has been banned from all football-related activity for four months after FIFA found him guilty of biting Italian pund Giorgio Chiellini. That's all. That's collecting stickers. Uh, that's doing <laughs> keep you up. If he goes online to play FIFA, it'll go no. <laughs> uh, it'll just stop him. Nothing. Nothing. He gets, he gets out of the team photo. He gets out of training. So basically, if you bite people, you get out of doing stuff. Mm. So if I bit my mother-in-law, can I get out of that christening on Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> imagine so. Yeah. 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 So his argument for in his defence was, I lost my balance, yeah. falling on top of my opponent, hitting my face against him. It was at that point in which my penis entered the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm in so a, yours as well. <laughs> in this accident and emergency room. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was quite erotic it was. because it was just it was like, uh, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, when I've bitten people in the past... Yes. I would uh, bite my initials into the back of the person that I was... What's wrong with yeah. that? <laughs> it just sort of... It just what, is. what are you, Zorro? <laughs> no, uh... but you would just... As, as they were sleeping, you just mark gently... Them. Mark yeah. gently know your initials into them. How it's heavily kind of... sedated were these yeah. guys? <laughs> yes. I'm just a little cockney getting bit on the back. What I'm saying is that actually, not since Top Gun have I seen such a homoerotic scene. It was as quite. Suarez no, I'll give just, you that. Because uh, he went came from nowhere and then came in and he didn't quite nuzzle the man. <laughs> it has to be said. It's He's doing nothing for people with big teeth, is he? I but think you've got lovely teeth. You have lovely teeth. Thanks. Yeah. But when you was at school and you had big teeth, people were like, "Oh, you're going to bite me?" Uh, but now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, loads of people actually gathered outside his house, didn't they? Loads of fans gathered outside his face. Because apparently it's very easy to spot his house. Because there's a sign on the gate which says, the dog is the least of your worries. <laughs> <laughs> if he's not allowed to take part in any football-related activity, he could actually just come and play for England, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that the Uruguayan head of state he came out, didn't he, in support that of Suarez. Was yeah. He's, what did he say? He said, FIFA are a bunch of old bastards. <laughs> That's interesting for a head of state, isn't it? You wouldn't expect the Queen to come out and go, well, Sepp Blatter, what a tosser he is. <laughs> he looked over from the balcony going, wanker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what sort of reception did uh, the England players get on their return? Yeah. No, nothing. Yeah. nothing. Got one the man crowd, and a dog yeah. turned up. The crowds yeah. turned out. This is at the uh, airport where the England players... <laughs> <laughs> it's not that surprising that nobody showed up. The England team spent almost as long in baggage reclaim as they did in the group stages. <laughs> 
she's not even a fan, that one. She's the official that looks for illegally shipped ferrets. <laughs> <laughs> I got quoted in the Sun during the week because I tweeted midway through, I think it was South Korea's last group game, because I was just sick of every time we just cut to another unfeasibly glamorous people who've clearly been put in by FIFA to create this image of, yeah, come to FIFA World Cup events. It's where fun people hang out. <laughs> uh, rather than what football matches properly are, which is fat blokes from Newcastle uh, stripped to their waist in December going, oi! <laughs> And the amount of people who got really angry at me for oh, yeah. taking our women away. Uh, <laughs> so basically, you, you irritated loads of people last week, and now you're mentioning it again so as you can irritate them one more time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was quite funny to watch get angry about it. <laughs> well, yeah. what it's, it's when it's like a penalty shootout, and then they focus in on the crowd, and they're all worried. Oh, my God, we can go to the World Cup, and then go, big screen! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just an amazing clip of the linesman. Have you seen that? No. It's on the internet where linesman, he's, he's on the big screen, he's got his hat come like that, and then you see him just look like that, and he goes... <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, it just adds a pressure that you... I don't know how everyone else watches the football, but I, I enjoy the football immensely, and uh, especially when, you know, all day, and you just make yourself comfortable, so it's, it's pants and vest, it's a die-hard outfit, and uh, <laughs> you dress like John McLean. You've got several uh, tubs of Pringles, so you can alternate between yeah. them, because I can fit my whole fist in a, a, a Pringles. And... Uh, <laughs> so, you're there, you've got crisps on you, the cat's licking off your face, <laughs> and you're just lying. And then on the screen, there's this, Beautiful Brazilian woman, like, and you're like, fuck you, just <laughs> fuck you. I agree, I entirely agree. <laughs> It, it, it also it, it creates a false impression, and also one of the joys of watching sport, all sport is half that room are really unhappy. Mm. I want to see the unhappy mm. one. Mm -hmm. Show me the child whose face got painted now crying it off. What you watching sport? Not like hey, it was a beautiful. <laughs> 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 Tune in, yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> and you're the tearful scouts. That's football. Yeah. The FIFA with it, like, oh, junk, 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 junk. Yeah. No, that's not football. That's not sport at all. <laughs> at the end of that round, the points go to Rob, Susan, and Andy. <laughs> now we come to scenes we'd like to see. So if everyone can make their way to the performance area, please. I read out this week's topics, and then we'll see what our panels can come up with. The first subject tonight is. Things a sports commentator would never say. <laughs> Apologies, uh, the sport you're watching is apparently squash. And not, as I said earlier, tennis in prison. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I am sorry, you don't need a lip reader to see what he said after that challenge. He said, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> This man is rubbish at golf. Meow! 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 He's clearly hurt his knee. <laughs> Italy have had three shots in the second half. Tetanus, rabies and hepatitis. <laughs> and here come the Coxless Four so the women's tennis doubles can begin. <laughs> And as we wait for the final of the butterfly, it's hard to believe that just yesterday all these competitors were still caterpillars. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a new event here at the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow. Yes, get ready for shouting at your own reflection in a shop window. <laughs> Wow, unbelievable service. Three full bars on T-Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> and there's been a nasty clash in the Nigeria-Brazil game. Lime green with yellow. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you who want to watch the equestrian events, get your butler to press the red button. <laughs> Welcome to the Nazi pro -Am golf tournament. Hitler, as usual, is in the bunker. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Rooney has managed the full 90. Previously, his eldest was 76. <laughs> uh, 
And the Queen takes the bishop. This is turning out to be quite the royal wedding. <laughs> <laughs> and Suarez is being substituted. He's not injured, he's just full. <laughs> What an incredible backhand there from the Qatari president. <laughs> All right, the next topic is unlikely lines from a thriller. We meet at last, Mr Bond. I'm from the Child Support Agency. <laughs> I will look for you. I will find you. And when I do, you count to ten and try and find me. The story about the man that was killed getting a blowjob. Die hard. <laughs> I have your wife. And unless you give me 15 million dollars, I will give her back to you. <laughs> Someone in here is the killer. Is it John? Is it Sally? Or is it that massive bear? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely semen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me talk to the Navy SEALs. <clears throat> oink, oink. <laughs> they were strangers on a train. And they remained that way because they were British. <laughs> um, the cause of death is unknown, but his last words were, Parishes of a pussy! <laughs> <laughs> There's a mole in our organisation. Toad, ratty, badger. Any idea who it might be? <laughs> You are too late. Too late. Look at the timer. In 15 seconds, my ready meal will be ready. <laughs> Say hello to my little friend, Alan. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> the truth! You can't handle the truth! So thank you for signing up to the Mail Online website. <laughs> And that was the horrible moment that the comedian realised it wasn't a good thing to look like an Asian Rolf Harris. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, the point's going to rock Susan and Andy! <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Andy Parsons, Susan Carmen and Rob Beckett. <laughs> Commiserations to Robert Ranganathan, Hugh Dennis, and Hal Cottenham. Thanks for watching. I'm Darren Green. Good night.